Well, all eyes tonight, of course, are on record seeker John Lyon. But spare a thought for Scottish champion Drew Doherty. This is his second final. Two years ago, Lyon beat him on points at this same stage. Well, as we all know, Lyon attempts tonight this amazing achievement, if he gets it, of winning seven ABA titles. Now, just before we see the bout, let's take a closer look at Britain's top amateur boxer. The miracle is that John Lyon has stayed amateur all these years. Why hasn't this brilliant Lancastrian turned pro? The answer lies in his job. John Lyon makes glass in his hometown of St. Helens. The heat of battle is nothing compared with the heat of the glass furnace. His employers, Pilkington, quite rightly see him as a valuable asset. And to keep him amateur, they sponsor his career with thousands of pounds. But for this, John would surely have gone the way of most other good British amateurs into the professional ranks. He also belongs to a club that's sponsored by a brewery. Well, beer and glass do go well together. It's a club that's produced other champions and almost certainly will produce some more. His hero is 26 now and been training at this famous club a long time. Well, I started when I was about eight years old and then I just went, so I was there about a year and I just laid off it for a couple of years. I started back when I was 13 and in competitions when I was 14 I started proper. You'd be wrong to think that winning six ABA trophies has made him blase. This year's final against his old rival Drew Doherty is something special. Well, it, it is because it's, it's going to be the all-time record if we get it. But I'm taking it just as any other final. I'm just doing the same things and hopefully I'm going to get through and win it. I think it's uh, motivating me a bit more because if I get it, I'm going to be the first one ever. And it's just, I think it's going to be that little bit more edge. I should be expected win, but I, I'm not taking the contest like that. You've got to, you know, everyone, like, you take it the same. I'll take it the same. He's there, he's got to try and do me. I've beat him three times, so he's got to prep think into it for, for beat me. So, I'll be, I'll be on, on the night, I hope. The poster reminds us that the Gilbody brothers, Ray and George, came from this club, winning eight ABA titles between them, under coach Tony Smart, the man behind John Lyon. He's, he's a gem, he's a good lad. Well, they're all, they're, they're, for some reason or other, that's the way I bring them along, so that they if they don't want to train, they don't, they better not come here. They're easy to say. After a certain period that they've been like, we say like 12 months or something like that, then they find out that I'm not as bad tempered as they seem like, you know, and, uh, and then they get a bit of a rapport huh, between myself and the rest of the lads, and it's easy, as long as you're fit and healthy. And, you know, it's just like an extension of what we're doing here every night. Like, you know, it's like, we expect champions, we don't hope, to, we expect them. They, if they work as they do work, well, we just take it for granted that they will be champions. Life with the Lions in 1988 promises everything. An amazing record to be set, and then South Korea beckons. Seoul, the Olympics, and the ultimate prize. I went to the Olympics in 1984, and uh, I lost to the American, and he went on to win, win the gold medal. If I go to the Olympics in Seoul, I want to win a medal. Any medal will do, but you've you got to reach up for the top, and that's what I want, the gold medal, more than anything. Well, now, here is Lyon facing the most important night Second of his down. life at Wembley. First round. Against Drew Doherty, the Scottish champion, his old rival that he's beaten three times already. Scottish cries behind me of, come on Drew, the lion tamer. He'll be a good man if he tames this lion. Drew Doherty, 22 years old from the Croy Miners Club. John Lyon, dressed in the famous green and gold of Greenall St. Helens. And what interest this man Lyon has brought to this year's George Wimpy ABA Championships. I never thought I'd ever live to see a man this century able to win six, let alone seven, ABA titles. It's so much more difficult to do it today than it was in the previous century when it was last done by Joseph Steers back in the late 
1800s. Good start by Lyon, he's going straight into the attack. The occasion certainly not uh, getting on top of him. But this Scottish welder, Doherty, is a good man. One of two Scottish brothers who dominate Scottish boxing at the lightest weights. Brother Willie is a light flyweight. Doherty keeping cool, waiting for Lyon to attack and then trying the counter punches. Not doing too badly with it either. Lyon's picking up one or two counter punches too as he comes in. Doherty not exactly losing out on these exchanges. Well, that was some opening contest, and Lyon worked very, very hard. Indeed, some opening round, I should say. He worked very hard there. And yet, uh, Doherty was going with him all the way and certainly wasn't losing out. And there were one or two lumps and bumps on the face of Lyon to prove it, including that uh, mark up on his forehead that he picked up in training and that you saw in our little uh, preview of him. John Lyon, 26 years old, 5 feet 4 inches tall, now just one win away from this historic record. Joseph Steers. Did it between 1890 and 1893 at two weights, middle and heavy. And he was able to do it in four years because uh, you could win at more than one weight in one year on those, in those faraway days. The klaxons ring Second out. Down. Second round. Lion in green. Doherty lost in the final here two years ago on points to Lyon. Last year, Lyon outpointed him in the semi-finals and beat him in the semi-finals in 84 at light flyweight. Doherty has been champion of Scotland five times, twice at light fly and three times at this present flyweight, eight stone. Doherty has made no plans to retreat. Stands his ground. Giving almost as good as he's getting here. Good right from Doherty. Lyon using the ring now and moving away. And Doherty has taken over. gets back into the groove again with the left hand. But Doggett is always there, right in front of him within punching range. Lyon gets back on top.
Boxing skillfully on the retreat now, Lyon, using the left hand to pick up points. And a good right, too. I don't think there's ever been any sort of clinch. Lyon bringing all these years and years of experience to bear now. But Doherty's still going with him. It's close. And what a round of applause these two get after those first two rounds of tremendous boxing. Drew Doherty, 22, from Croy Miners. He won for Scotland against England in Gateshead in January this year. Against Dave McNally, who was deputising for Lyon, who at that time was recovering from a nose operation. Drew and his brother were brought into boxing by their, their father, and they took it up when they were scarcely into their teens. So this man's been around for about 10 years, and he's only 22. And now the star of the evening, John Lyon. Married man, three children, one of nine children himself. Commonwealth Games gold medalist in Edinburgh in 86. And now seeking this historic seventh Second ABA title. John Lyon then, perhaps only three minutes away from making history. Lyon on the left in green. And Doggett has come to punch it out in the final three minutes. Tremendous battle, and not much in it. Can you imagine the disappointment Lyon would suffer if history was snatched from him now? Doherty will not give ground. And with sheer determination, Lyon forces him back and forces him to take a standing count. What drama in the last round. That was sheer, rugged, determined assault by Lyon when the going was hardest, and that's what's made him the champion he is. He's come out for the third, stronger than ever. And that standing count over Doherty has probably determined this. It was the turn of the tide that Lyon needed. There's a bump on the side of Lyon's face, down the left-hand side on the cheek, and it's looking ominous. But it won't worry him now. And still Doherty is trying to snatch this championship. This is likely to be the most memorable of all Lions championship battles, and that's because Dockett has made it so. Lyon still battles forward, seconds to go. The bell, and he must have done it, and Dockett knows it, and he pats Lyon on the back. Lyon knows he's done it. The whole of Wembley Arena knows that Lyon has achieved a fantastic record. We have to wait for the official decision.
but there can't be much doubt that this little man from St Helens in Lancashire has done something that nobody really thought possible in these modern times. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and ABA national champion for 1988 at flyweight by a majority decision, Lion in the blue corner. Champion for an historic seventh time. But one judge voted against him. That's how close it was. But Lyon has set a record that may never be equal, let alone beaten. John, many congratulations. Thanks very much, Shadow. That is a, an amazing achievement, seven title. But he made it hard for you. Didn't you well, earned uh, that prop tonight, I tell you. <laughs> I think it's the hardest fan I've had. He was still in pity and he was trying his hardest. I know a, a lot of pressure on my, on my family, everybody from Saints Island is here. I think I tried a little bit too hard, should have boxed a bit more, but then it there once or I'm up there. You came out very hard at the start, you really went for it, didn't you? Well, I was trying to slow him down because I knew he'd come straight into me, where to take the play away from me, so I stuck with him. Well, like I say, it's about winning and attend it there once, or that's you know, it's in the record books now. So absolutely, and, and may it. never be equal, let alone beaten. Well, if somebody does beat it, they'll have to work hard. <laughs> and they work as hard as me, they the learning. Did you realise that one judge actually went for Doherty? Well, they heard the majority. I, I knew it was close, but I thought it just edged it a bit last round. I thought it was not last round, and I thought it just won the last round. It so. is a, it's a fantastic achievement, but it's a weight off your shoulders now, isn't it? You've got it over, you've done it. That's now, right now. You can think now about what? The Olympics? I'll have a little bit of a rest, a few weeks off, and then start building up to the Olympics. So if you pick the team tomorrow, and I, I'm hoping to get picked. And then I don't think there's too much doubt about that <laughs> summer. <laughs> well, we see, and then after the Olympics, I'll have a rest. And all the family here tonight? They're all there. Everybody's here. Wonderful. I think half a cent is here. How are you going to celebrate? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well first, I'm just going to have a minute and then have a nice drink and then go out with my family and enjoy myself. Wonderful. Let myself go a bit for the, the day. I've done every one of your seven finals and I've enjoyed them all. Well, well thanks done. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. In London's East End, they call him marvellous Marlon Ward, and he's been knocking opponents over regularly. But the army is hoping that Sergeant Keith Howlett of the Royal Engineers will bar his way to the title. Second down, Sir Lovegrave. And Sergeant Howlett is wearing the white singlet on the right now. Marlon Ward 20, Howlett 25, and the story of the first two rounds fairly simply told. Howlett has the reach on Ward, and he's been using it to good advantage. He's poking out a long left arm, Howlett. And the shorter man, Marlon Ward, has been having some difficulty getting past it. Ward has got a, a powerful right hand, but he hasn't got it over too often. He has drawn blood from the nose of the sergeant, but he hasn't really landed that right hand with such devastating effect as he did in the semi-finals when he put his namesake, Sean Ward of Wales, away in the third round with a right to the head. Not punching correctly, Howlett. The sergeant from the Royal Engineers, all-round sportsman, cross-country runner, footballer, stationed at Winchester. Ward from the Newco Repton Club, the London champion. A lot of inside the distance wins on his record this season. But the sergeant is defying him to land the big right. The blood coming again from Howlett's nose. The ward being made to pay dearly for the blows he's getting in. Howlett's been trying since 84 to get this far. Champion of the combined services. And it's fair to say, I think, that he's controlled this bout from long range. Very cleverly. But there probably isn't all that much in it.
Hallett beginning to blow hard now. But we're into the last 30 seconds. Ward, the stronger of the two, at the finish. Howlett is a very tired man. That bell's not come along with too soon for him. He thinks he's won, and that would be my opinion too. It may well depend on how the judges saw some of his punching. He got one caution for incorrect punching. But I would say he's done enough. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, an ABA national champion for 1988 at bantamweight by a majority decision, Howlett in the red corner. And Howlett gets there narrowly. Two judges to one, vote for him. The sergeant from the Royal Engineers, Keith Howlett, takes a very welcome title back to the army. They don't win too many these days, but this man, after a few years of trying, has done it for them. Well, these two know all about ABA finals, although they've never won one. Scottish champion Dave Anderson has been in two, and London champion Colin McMillan was last year's finalist at this weight. Second down, first down. The Scott, Dave Anderson, in the black strip, against Colin McMillan here, who may well switch from Orthodox to Southport and back again. He's that sort of boxer. And wearing his glitter boots tonight, McMillan. Anderson from Bella Houston in Glasgow makes a habit of getting to Wembley for these finals in the even number years. He was beaten here in the Bantamweight final in 84 by John Highland and then in the Featherweight final in 86 by Paul Hodkinson. And both those winners, of course, now professionals. McMillan was here last year and lost the final. To Peter English from the north of England. strong boy and he is and he survived that well McMillan going to the finish but Anderson still looks strong that happened about halfway through this opening round The left hand this time takes Anderson full in the face and the Scot is going through a bad period, trying to fight his way out of it. And McMillan, who felt he shouldn't have lost to English last year, is going about his work in a very determined fashion this time. coming back strongly towards the close of the round. <laughs> David Anderson works for British Rail as a railman, runs marathons. In fact, he's run a marathon inside three hours, which is not bad going. So there's no shortage of stamina. And he needed all his stamina there to survive that knockdown. This is what happened, a beautiful little right cross. 
There it is, look at that. Classic. And as I say, Anderson did well to survive. Well, the strength of this Scott is beginning to tell. McMillan clipped him again with the right in the second, but it didn't have the same effect. Meanwhile, Anderson has got stronger and stronger, it seems, and uh, McMillan, instead of trying to box his way out of this, or through it, was elected in the second anyway to have a bit of a war with Anderson, and I wouldn't have thought those were the right tactics against a much stronger man, which uh, Anderson clearly is. Anderson's been champion in Scotland four times, at Bantam, twice at Feather, and once at Lightweight. It'll be quite an achievement if Anderson picks himself up off the floor and wins this. But he's threatening to do just that. England international Colin McMillan from the Barking Boys Club. Technician. He's won the London Featherweight Championship four seasons in a row. himself up on the floor and really never looked back it goes to the judges ladies and gentlemen the winner an ABA national champion for 1988 at featherweight by a majority decision Anderson in the red corner and he's done it Dave Anderson who lost two ABA titles has now come good at the third attempt, but he had to get up off the floor to do it. And sympathy for Colin McMillan, who goes out of this ring a loser for the second year run. A battle of 19-year-olds here. Mark Ramsey from the Midlands shot his opponent out of the semi-finals in just 44 seconds. But Southport Charlie Kane from Scotland knows all about him. They've met before. Ramsey won on points. From the left, the tall young Scott in the dark singlet, Charlie Kane, against the punching specialist, Mark Ramsey. Ramsey's been trying for two rounds to get close and throw the big right, but this tall young man from Scotland, he stands five feet ten and a half inches, and he only weighs nine and a half stone. Charlie Kane from the Antonine Club in Glasgow, he's got a cool head on young shoulders, and he's been keeping, keeping himself largely out of trouble. 
using his reach and his feet. Ramsey getting the ticking off there for punching to the sides and back of the body. Kane uh, got to Wembley by winning his semi-final against the former flyweight uh, champion, the former ABA flyweight champion, Steve Nolan, who was making a comeback. And Ramsey got here with that 44-second uh, win over Tony Khan, the world's champion. But he's not had the same devastating effect on Charlie Kane. It's amazing to me, he's still only 19, Charlie. He seems to have been Hi. around forever. Scotland used him when he was very young, and he's... Uh, He's always been favoured for big international occasions by them, so he's picked up a lot of experience around Europe and bringing it to bear here now to keep, keep himself away from the right hand of the powerful punching Ramsey from Smallheath in Birmingham. Got it in there. Great! Quite a startled look came across Kane's face when he felt that one. Right. If Kane lets his concentration lapse here or he tires and his work is getting a little bit more ragged, that might just be what? the opportunity that Ramsey is looking for. Both men getting tired now. not been one of the night's most thrilling finals but uh, a caution or rather a public warning for illegal use of the head goes to Ramsey in the closing seconds and that could well be the thing that will tell against him all over Ramsey tried for three rounds to get the big one across but Charlie Kane from Glasgow was too clever for him. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and ABA national champion for 1988 at lightweight by a majority decision, Kane in the red corner. And Scotland have another champion, Charlie Kane, only 19. Too clever for Mark Ramsey and gets two of the three judges' vote and is our national champion. Northerner Alan Hall is back again. Last year, when he was only 17, he reached the lightweight final. This year, at Light Welter, he hopes to win, but uh, Jim Torbert, the new London champion, seems to have a lot of promise. Second out. Second out. Alan Hall in the white strip, the boy from Darlington, 18 years old. And Jim Talbot wearing the famous black and white strip of the Fisher Club in Bermondsey, South East London. Close opening round with Hall, as usual, proving himself dour and aggressive and very awkward inside. Talbot. A new young star on the London scene. Not a lot of experience at this level, but he handled his semi-final extremely well when he outpointed the, the very experienced campaigner from Scotland, Jim Pender. That was a good win. Talbot getting roughed up inside. Paul, in white, had a very hard struggle in the semi-finals with Michael Smith of Wales. Smith was an iron man who soaked up everything and still came forward. And all only just scraped through. 
but trying to work his way in behind the, the left lead. But when you get close to Hall, he's a cagey, awkward customer. Ties you up, rushes you up. It's a door old struggle, as you can see for yourself. Well, he's not the only culprit of that. Cole is a little more clever about it, I think. He does it on the blind side. So, everything to go for in the third and final round. Very, very close up to now. This is Jim Talbot, the new London champion. Works in the building trade. Well, the pair of them must know that it's close. So this is liable to be a pretty severe test. Talbot in black and white from London. Paul in white from Darlington. Trying to go one better than last year. determined to uh, make this last round tell if he can it's uh, he's going the better of the two at the moment Wait. some anxious London cries to Jim to work Wait. they're not in there with all are they but dropping his arms, usually a sign of tiredness. The lead creeping in. His right hand from Hall, and he's giving Torbert a little bit of a working over at this stage. Torbert hasn't really been able to make a punch toll, and now getting very tired, the arms are leaden. And Hall sees that, and that gives him increased hope. <laughs> Nothing scientific about this, just a very hard struggle between two willing workers. side from all. Torbert has found himself punching empty air most of the time in this final three minutes. Hey! It has all signs of going Hall's way. Stop. 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 Pollard. Oops. 
warns uh, Caution's Hall about his head. Well, Talbot game to the last, but he wasn't really getting anywhere. And for my money, Hall has uh, pinched it. But it was a tough battle all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, an ABA national champion in 1988 at light welterweight by a unanimous decision, Hall in the red corner. Alan Hall from Darlington, a loser at lightweight last year, but a winner at light welter. This, what a good comeback by the man from Darlington. Well, now, this is the man who will lead Great Britain's amateur boxing team to, to the Seoul Olympics. It is, of course, our chief national coach, Kevin Hickey, and he's talking here with Jim Neely. Kevin Hickey, I think the most important question is, when are we going to know the Great Britain team for Seoul? That's a decision to be made by the selectors. The process is not finished yet. Tomorrow morning, they start by re-examining what's happened tonight and changing the Olympic squad accordingly. <laughs> and then perhaps in seven days or so there might be some news from them but tomorrow morning is when they revise the squad there's no guarantee at this stage that anyone who wins the 1988 title will be going to the olympics there's not because there's an olympic squad which was formed and in january of this year the final olympic squad before the championship started the declared policy is that the final olympic team will be chosen from this squad so if somebody wins an aba title tonight who's not in the squad Unfortunately for them, they won't go. What have you been able to achieve with the squad so far? The problem really is when we started in June of 86 is the loss to the professionals. We've lost something like 60% of the original squad. So with the 24 boxes, and we're continually chasing, changing the faces, bringing newcomers in, uh, keeping to the 14 English boxes, six Scottish and four Welsh. But the problem is that because of the con lack of continuity, then really when it comes to the preparation, then that's when the hard work and the improvements in the final Olympic team will be chosen. So from my point of view, the sooner the team is chosen, the better. And what will be involved in the build-up to Seoul? Well, there are some going off to Canada for a, a multi-nations cup in early June. Uh, May the 21st to the 27th, all the new Olympic squad as identified from tonight and from who are in the squad already, we'll meet at Crystal Palace, the National Sports Centre. We'll start our training, and in units of five days on, and then maybe two weeks off, and then back in for seven days into camp, being on a, a highly specific training programme back in the clubs, then by the game starting, then they will be fit and ready to go. We won't have the Cubans there, which will be a big loss to boxing in general, but it looks as if the standard, even without the Cubans, is going to be extremely high. It's going to be tremendous. There are over 500 boxers anticipated. The number of countries competing reflects the boom at international level of amateur boxing. And what we've got to remember that some of these lads, whom we see tonight, who are in the Olympic squad, they'll be meeting the hard season, full-time, 26, 27-year-olds who have been on, perhaps, on the Eastern European circuit for a number of years. The person who wins a gold medal in Seoul will face the problem of having maybe seven contests over a period of 12 days. It really is a hectic program ahead. Does Britain have the boxers who are up to that sort of competitive level? There are some, certainly. And the final Olympic team, whatever the number is decided, may be possibly in the seven or eight region. Then my job and my fellow coaches is to make sure that that little bit of a shine that we see becomes a reality and I'm sure that Whatever form they've shown in the past, given the intensive programme, given the sports science involvement as we've got this time, then they're going to do Britain proud over in Seoul. Finally, a comment about the outstanding boxer for the last seven years, John Lyon. It was lovely to see. It really was beautiful to see. John is a, a fine example of amateur boxing. He's uh, somebody who's been a servant of the sport, and to see him break that record, it couldn't have gone to a finer young man. Well, an historic achievement being commemorated here in the ring tonight at Wembley with Lord Oaksey, the president of the Amateur Boxing Association, giving John Lyon a special commemorative trophy to mark the astonishing achievement of winning seven ABA titles. Mark McCreeth from Lincoln made everyone sit up and take notice when he beat last year's ABA champion Mark Elliott. But the Royal Marines 
have a tough youngster in Rob Wildman, only 19 and in his first senior season. Well, Mark McCreef from Lincoln. All eyes will be on him here as a man who can really punch. And Rob Wildman, this interesting young Marine, 19 years old, Navy champion, who has come through very impressively for this time. McCreef in the scarlet singlet. comes from the Bracebridge Club in Lincoln. And there's always a lot of interest these days in boxers from the Royal Marines because of the history of Terry Marsh who came up through that service. He was a Marine commander and then later a fireman. But Marsh was uh, one of our most famous amateur champions for many years. He boxed in four ABA finals and won three of them. And the last two of them were of this particular weight, welterweight. Wildman, the Marine in the white vest. Points winner in the semi-final over Scotland's Paul Dolan. <laughs> McCreeth has scored a few KOs on his way to this final, although not in the semi-final. He had a very close contest there with uh, John Hudd of Wales. idea there of the battling qualities of this marine in the white singlet comes forward under fire the priest grinning at him enjoying the battle I don't know whether they're gonna be able to keep this sort of pace up no and Wildman even while he was on the seat of his pants was looking at the Referee and saying, no, Mr. Beatty, I did not get knocked down, I slipped. There was no count. surely can't keep that sort of pace up throughout the rest of this waterweight final. Well, the slugging didn't stop throughout the second round, and here we go again now, the final round between Marine Rob Wildman in the white singlet and the Lincoln man, Mark McCreef. And they've been going at it like this now throughout the contest. Neither man willing to give way. Priest grins as he takes that punch and comes back. As rugged a contest in an ABA final as you'll see. Wyman's arms beginning to come down. McCreeth, of course, is the man who in the Midland Counties final put out last year's ABA champion, Mark Elliott, and then in the England semi-finals KO'd the man who was then thought to be the favourite for this title, Gary Logan of Repton in London. He walked on for a left hook and the spark out in the first round. But Wildman is given almost as good as he's got here. Go. Marine Wildman stationed in Plymouth, but born in Worksop and now lives at Ollerton near Mansfield. Priest, 23, a veteran of 131 contests 
which he's been having since he was 11 years old. Works as a development engineer. Struggle. Absolutely locked in battle as though it's been like this from the word go. The judges are not going to have too easy a task sorting this lot out. the decisive punch it might be if the judges were a little bit indecisive that will be the thing that will make up their minds for them let's look at that again right on the bell this happened right hand he drove a little right hand through and McCreeth walked onto it and then found himself staring at the canvas ladies and gentlemen the winner, an ABA national champion from 1988 at welterweight by unanimous decision, McCreef in the red corner. McCreef made it despite the last second knockdown. That hasn't gone down too well here at Wembley, but McCreef has come through and doesn't look entirely convinced himself. But nonetheless, you're looking at the ABA welterweight champion. 1988. What a sensation 19-year-old Wayne Ellis of Wales caused when he beat England's Olympic hope Neville Brown inside a round in the semi-finals. Well, now he faces the Sunderland veteran Willie Neal in his first final at the age of 27. First round. The Welsh sensation Wayne Ellis, the man who destroyed Neville Brown's hopes of Another Olympic title and a place, uh, another ABA title and a place in the Olympics. And now he faces all in white, Willie Neal, the old campaigner from Sunderland. <laughs> Ellis, the Welsh champion at this weight for the second year running. He didn't go on beyond the Welsh championships last year. And the man who took his place from Wales was dealt with very summarily indeed by Neville Brown, who went on to win the ABA title. But Ellis took revenge on his Welsh compatriots' behalf this year with a vengeance. Ellis has won all his ten bouts as a senior. Had an impressive junior record, NABC champion in... 1987 and three times a Welsh youth champion. And Willie Neal of Sunderland in white. First appearance in a final. But over and over again, this man has been champion of the Northeastern Counties. He fell foul of Neville Brown last season in the England semi finals. Brown knocked him out in 2 minutes 59. So on the comparative form, Ellis ought to do a, a fairly slick job here, but things don't work out always like that in boxing. <laughs> Ellis in the red vest of Wales. Oh, and the Welsh sensation is on the seat of his pants. The old campaigner has struck first. 
still almost a minute to go of this first round. And Ellis did not like that. He is coming back strongly. And he's shaken uh, Neil there with a the punch. Well, this would be a turn-up if Neil were to dispose of the man who disposed of Neville Brown. <laughs> well, that must be a somewhat disillusioned 19-year-old striding back to the corner. Wayne Ellis from Cardiff YMCA. He started a hot favourite and then suddenly found himself on the floor like this. Neil in white. Left hook. There it was. Beautiful. No defence against it. Another view. He comes in over the top with a left hook. The unguarded right-hand side, and he was all over the shot. Second down, third, first round. Well, amazingly, here's Neil coming out for the third. Ellis has landed every one of his best punches on Neil's head, and Neil has yet to go down, although he took a standing counter the second. He's almost gone again here. Back of the net. Amazing courage by the man from Sunderland in white. And again, Neil walks into those thundering, bludgeoning punches and will not go down. In fact, far from going down, he keeps coming forward. Tommy Beatty, the referee, having a close look at, at Neil. And Bellis goes to work again. Neil has been a revelation here, the way he stood up to this young Welshman's assault. And Ellis winces there as Neil plants a right hand into his ribs and follows up with a good jolting left of the head. And Neil's coming again. hitting contest of the night so far young Wayne Ellis is blowing and puffing he simply I think can't believe that Neil is still coming at him after what he's done to him Another standing time. Neil takes another one. What a hero this man is. He's had Ellis on the floor in the first round. He's taken all sorts of punishment in the last round and a half. And he's still on his feet. Well, in the old days, they used to have a character up in Sunderland called Cast Iron Casey. And this man is a throwback to Jack Casey. He used to be known as the Sunderland Assassin back in the late 20s and early 30s. Another bludgeoning attack from Ellis. I think it might be called off. No, it's another count. Second one in this round. The bell's coming up. There it is. One final standing count. Neil survived to the bell. He never was off his feet. And the worst corner congratulate him for that. But there can't be any doubt that despite being on the seat of his pants in the first round, the 19-year-old Welshman, Wayne Ellis, 
is going to get the whistle. The winner and ABA national champion from 1988 at light middleweight by unanimous decision, Ellis in the red corner. So 19-year-old Wayne Ellis, the man who destroyed all the hopes of Neville Brown, takes Brown's place as the light middleweight champion of Britain. Only 19. What a future. And what a birthday present for Welshman Nicky Piper if he wins tonight. He was 22 yesterday. The man who could spoil the occasion is a Marine, Mark Edwards. Both men in the final for the first time. Mark Edwards from the left, the third serviceman to appear in these finals tonight. Nicky Piper, all in red, from Penarth Club, works in insurance. A fairly close first round, although Mark Edwards did get one good right hand in that uh, troubled Piper. And there's two more in there. Well, Edwards used to be with the London Club, Fitzroy Lodge, and then... Uh, Went off and joined the Royal Marines. Navy champion, combined services champion. And a man who knows what it's like to be on the receiving end of a punch from Nigel Benn. In 1986, they met in the London ABA Middleweight Championships. And uh, Edwards ran Benn to a very close points decision. So his record is uh, quite good. And Piper. Welsh middleweight champion the last two years and light middleweight champion of Wales the year before that when he was only 18. the danger punch for Piper. beginning to find the going a little rough and still another round to come stolen a lead after two rounds with Royal Marine Mark Edwards 24 years old the last three minutes then of this middleweight final the ABA title at stake Marine Mark Edwards in the white singlet and the Welsh champion Nicky Piper from the Penarth team. Every single final so far tonight has gone the distance. Hugging punch again from Edwards. His punching generally is shorter and more accurate than Piper's. And Edwards is very close to victory indeed. Edwards wins 
here, the Royal Marines will be thinking back to the great days when Terry Marsh represented them so often in these championships. has got anything to gain by getting involved in that sort of ball. He's got to do some punching. Disillusioned and rather Closing seconds. Stop. And two tired men fall into each other's arms. A tough, ruling struggle that. But I suspect we should find with this man. Royal Marine Mark Edwards is the new champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, an ABA national champion for 1988 at middleweight by unanimous decision. Edwards in the ring. The Marines have done it. The former Fitzroy Lodge boxer, Mark Edwards. A triumphant season. And the climax, the ABA middleweight title. Could this be Harry Lawson's night at last? This Londoner, born of Scottish parents, has lost the last two finals. But now he has to overcome the man from Manchester, Maurice Corn, who had a bye in the semi-finals. Harry Lawson, the Londoner, in green, who's been Scottish light heavyweight champion these last three seasons. And Morris Corr, from Mossside Club Manchester, 22, two years younger than Lawson. Both his men stand over six feet. They've had two quite uh, hard rounds. Nothing as dramatic as that has happened before, but uh, that's not a knockdown. For the second time, Corr slips and stumbles. Well, it's been pretty even stuff so far, most of it rather like this. And neither man's managed to gain any sort of ascendancy over the other. Morris Corr had a bye through the semi-finals when the Welsh champion pulled out. He was the middleweight champion of uh, the Northern Counties three years ago, Morris Corr. But he didn't get past the England semi-finals. He came up against Johnny Melfer from the West Country and got knocked out in one round by Melfer. And Lawson, of course, beaten here two years ago by Jim Moran of England. And then knocked out in two rounds in this final last year by John Beckles. And uh, Beckles has not been seen around this year. The last heard of him, he was in America. Still boxing, we believe as an amateur. Four told to keep his head up. Well, it'll be desperate for Lawson if he fails again. It's a messy but even contest. I'm not 
sure in my own mind which way it's going to go. A little bit of kidney punching there from Cork. the swing scene here tonight. Well, it's not quite the same as the days of John Conte when he was winning ABA titles. Further back than that, of course, Henry Cooper was ABA light heavyweight champion. Twice. Stop. All over. And not an easy contest to score because there were so few really effective punches landed. Very close indeed. I'm going to sit on the fence and let the judges sort it out. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and ABA national champion of 1988 at light heavyweight by unanimous decision, Lawson in the blue corner. And Lawson, Harry Lawson, the Londoner who represents Scotland, has done it at last. He's been here twice before and walked out a loser, but this time the honours are his, light heavyweight champion of Britain, Harry Lawson. A fascinating battle, this one. Henry Akin Wandy, six feet seven inches tall, who's been runner up the last two years, up against the old campaigner Harold Hilton from the West Country, who was champion in 1982 and again in 85. And this is what happened at the end of the first round with Harold Hilton, whose chin has always been vulnerable, taking this little right hand clip. There it is. And over he goes on the seat of his pants. But he survived, and we move now into the third and final round. Second round. The tall man, Akin Wandy, from the Lynn Club in South East London, and Hilton, all in white, from the Viking Club in Brockworth, near Gloucester. His fourth ABA final, and it's the first time in his finals that Hilton's had to go beyond one round. He beat Horace, he beat Horace Notice in one of the finals. He's the only man who's ever beaten our reigning British and Commonwealth professional heavyweight champion. He beat Notice in one round in an ABA final. Notice beat him in one round in another final. And uh, Hilton put out Bobby Parks in the 85 final in 21 seconds. But here we are in the third round and the tall man seems to be on top. Akim Wandy. He's gone from here, two years running, a loser last year on points to Jim Moran and two years ago disqualified for holding against Eric Carduza. And then threw himself full length on the ring floor in disappointment. Back in Wandy, switching from orthodox to southpaw throughout this contest. And Hilton, who really can punch, has never managed to find that chin. It's probably too high up for him to get at. So could this be Akin Wandy's year at last? Akin Wandy, born in Dulwich in South London, lived in Nigeria for a bit. Stop. Now studying agriculture. Stop. Stop it. Stop. 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 Naughty boy. And Hilton now are getting a little bit desperate. He knows he's got to land the big punch. And he can't get at him. So Hilton, who was uh, bowled over by a short right hand in the first, has not managed to spread the tall man on the floor. Only got uh, 30 seconds or so left, and it's looking very much as though 
the six foot seven inch Akim Wandy, after two disappointments, is at last to become the heavyweight champion. It's fought a very crafty battle here. All over. And it looks very much to me as though this man has done it at last. It's taken him three years, but I think we shall find it will be his arm that's lifted here as champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, an ABA national champion for 1988 and heavyweight, by unanimous decision, Akin Wandi in the red corner. Yes, he's there at last. Henry Akin Wandi from the Lynn Club. Two sad years of disappointment, but finally, triumph. And finally, the giants of the competition, the super heavies. Kevin McCormick of Wales won his semi-final when his opponent was disqualified for biting him. Steve Woolison, a big puncher from the Forest of Dean, has promised to keep his teeth to himself. Second down, third, down the <laughs> McCormack from Wales comes out of the left-hand corner against Steve Woolison for the third and final round of the final bout of the night. And Woolison, the big man from the Forest of Dean, from the Lydney Club, with his back to you now, has had a standing count over him in the second round. No knockdowns, but the right hand of McCormick has played a pretty vital part in this so far. And now Wollaston needs his own big punch, bringing to bear here to try to change matters. That was a slap from McCormick. McCormick with the white socks and the light stripe down his trunks, double strike. Wollaston is getting worked over here by McCormick. Well, McCormick had two very rough years in these championships as Welsh champion. Two years ago, he got uh, beaten in one round in the semi-finals by Eric Cardoza. And last year, in the semi-finals, he was knocked out in one by Henry Akin Wandy. Both times as a heavyweight, and now he comes in as a super heavy and looks as though he may be on his way to this title against Steve Wollaston, the market organiser from Lydney. McCormack, a bricklayer born in Pontypool but plays soccer for Kimbran Town. three opponents to get to this final simply can't bring a big punch to bear needs it desperately can't find it oh. desperate effort there but McCormick has got the taste of victory half minute and the Welsh who fondly remember the days when Joe Erskine was ABA heavyweight champion back in 1953 will certainly give McCormick a rousing reception if he takes this super heavyweight title away oh there's the good Wollaston right and McCormick suddenly in a bit of trouble but the bell's coming up. And again. And he staggered. We're past three minutes on my watch. There's the bell. All over. And Wollaston's efforts almost certainly came much too late. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the ABA National Championship.
champion of 1988 at super heavyweight by unanimous decision, McCormick in yeah! the ring. And McCormick it is, and he goes down on his knees in celebration. A unanimous decision for the big Welshman, Kevin McCormick, who had two bad experiences in these championships in the semi-finals, and then finally, in 1988, came good and won the championship. And so we've come to the end of these George Wimpy ABA National Championships, the 100th Championships. Let's remind ourselves now of our new champions. And at light flyweight, third time lucky, Mick Cantwell. And then, of course, the record-breaking John Lyon, his seventh ABA title, breaking a 95-year-old record. The sergeant from the Royal Engineers, bantamweight Keith Howlett. And then Dave Anderson of Featherweight, the Scotsman, who went down in the first round but came through to win on points. Another Scotsman at lightweight, Charlie Kane, only 19 years old. At light welter, Alan Hall of Darlington, unsuccessful last year, successful this. And the welterweight from the Midlands, Mark McCreeth, who survived a knockdown at the very end to win his title. And light middleweight, Wayne Ellis from Wales, who had a nasty shock from Willie Neal in the opening round, but came through on points. The Marine, Mark Edwards, a unanimous points decision for him. And then at his third attempt, Harry Lawson finally made it, the Londoner who represents Scotland. At heavyweight, at his third attempt, Henry Akinwandy, six feet seven inches tall, triumphant at last. And finally, at super heavy, the Welsh champion, Kevin McCormack. And so now we wait to see which of those champions will be picked to represent Great Britain in the Olympic Games in Seoul in September. But no doubt at all whose night it was here at Wembley tonight. It was, of course, John Lyons, champion for the seventh time. Let's take a final look at the trophy that made amateur boxing history. <laughs>